The Welch Allen Service Tool. The Welch Allen Service Tool is a software application that is used to maintain your Welch Allen devices. These devices include the Connex Vital Signs Monitor 6000, the Connex Integrated Wall System, and the Pro BP 3400. This service tool will also be used for future products as they become available. What can the service tool do for you? It simplifies service and minimizes the resources you need to keep devices on the floor and running at peak performance. With the service tool, you can troubleshoot devices, install software updates and upgrades, perform device verification and calibration, minimize off-site repairs, view reports and other information, assign device locations on the floor, and install licensable features on your devices as they become available or as you purchase them. The Welch Allen Service Tool helps to enhance the value and longevity of your Welch Allen devices and systems by providing a gateway for biomeds to remotely collaborate with Welch Allen Service technicians via our secure Partner Connect network. This enables you to add future monitoring parameters, functionality, and clinical applications through the most cost-effective, innovative methods possible. Let's gain a better understanding of Partner Connect before we delve deeper into learning about the Welch Allen Service Tool. Partner Connect allows a Welch Allen technical support representative to assist customers with solving device or system problems by directing them on what steps to take next or, with customer permission, take control of the customer's PC while running the Welch Allen service tool. By connecting remotely to the device in question, the Welch Allen Technical Support Representative can retrieve device maintenance logs for fault analysis, run remote diagnostics, and run performance tests, all to determine the cause of the problem and recommend the best solution. The Welch Allen Service Tool notifies you when there is an update available for a particular device. Upon connecting the device to the PC with an Internet connection, the update can be installed on the device. Partner Connect interfaced with the Welch Allen Service Tool allows a Welch Allen Technical Support Representative to provide remote diagnostics, enhanced troubleshooting, assistance on installation and system operation, automated base software updates and enhanced options, management of device configurations and software levels, device metrics, runtime, as well as delivery of purchased software options and licenses. Now that you know a little more about Partner Connect, let's learn about the Welch Allen Service Tool. The Welch Allen Service Tool comes available in two packages. The Silver Package, or the Basic Package, allows the user to do everything described within this video, except for the calibration of the device. This functionality is available with the Gold Package, or full version of the Service Tool. The Gold Package is activated via our Technical Training Offering, or through Partners in Care Biomed Program. Technical training can be delivered via online training or on-site training for a fee, which varies depending on the device and number of people that wish to take the class. The Gold License Key is received after completion of this technical training. This license key is valid for a period of two years, and the Gold Package expires two years after activation. Refresher training is required to obtain a new activation key for the Gold Package. To confirm which service tool package you are running, do the following. With the service tool running, connect a device to the PC with a USB cable, then double-click on the device. When the device tab opens up, you will see the Verify Calibration tab. Once you click on it, it will inform you that you need a license. This means the silver package is active because you cannot calibrate the device with the silver package. Otherwise, the gold package is running. You can also view this by clicking on Administrator and select View Service Tool Licenses. A pop-up will appear with all gold licenses and their expiration date. To activate the gold license, go to Administration, Install License, select Service Tool License, input the authorization code provided from your training. Click Activate. The gold license will install, and the Service Tool will let you know the license is activated. The Verify Calibration tab will now become available for the device. Now that you know which package you are running, I will walk you through how easy it is to use the Welch Allen Service Tool. I will demonstrate using the Gold Package. The first thing you do is connect your device to a PC with a USB-A to Mini-B cable, if it is not already done. When you do this, you'll see the device show up in the Device List tab with a green box next to the device name, device serial number, device location, asset tag, and the IP address, if applicable to your device. The location and asset tag have not been set on this device, therefore the fields are blank. 
Click the small arrow to the left of the green box to expand the contents of the device. This device shows NIBP, SPO2, SureTemp, and Braun modules on board. The very first thing you should do is add this device to the Maintain Device list. To do this, click on Administration, Maintain Devices. Highlight your device listed in the Connected Devices section. Click on Add to Maintain Devices. As you can see, the device now appears on the left under Maintain Devices. Click Close. Once your device has been disconnected from the service tool, the device record is now maintained so that Partner Connect can identify and deliver specific updates and information to the service tool when they become available. When you click the Work List tab, you will see devices which need upgrades or updates, have licensable features available, or require maintenance such as calibration. Our device is the last device on the list, identified by the green box. A gray box indicates a device that is maintained but not connected to the service tool. Once connected, Welch Allen can notify technical staff that a device is due for a calibration or a software upgrade, or that a licensable feature is available. The work list also shows the asset tag and location of the device if it has been programmed into the device. This helps technical staff by indicating where the device is when work needs to be performed on the device. When you or a technical staffer performs the work, you should highlight the device row and click Work Done to delete the task from the work list. When you click on Request Work Orders, the service tool reaches out to the Partner Connect system and asks if anything is available for your maintained devices or the connected device. Click on the Device List tab. A drop-down on the bottom left of the page allows you to select which devices you would like to have in your list. Highlight the device and click Select. A new tab for this device opens. The Device Information tab contains multiple sub-tabs that display specific device information such as device name, serial number, IP address, Ethernet MAC address, and the radio's IP address. The device is not connected to a network, so you do not see a radio IP address. As discussed previously, the device breaks down into subcomponents based on the specific device configuration as listed here on the Device Information subtab. Listed here is the Welch Allen Connects device, which consists of a host controller, SPO2 sensor, SureTemp thermometer, a NIBP sensor, and Braun thermometer. If you click and highlight the Welch Allen Connects device, you see the firmware and hardware versions, the manufacture date, and the serial number. Now click on the host controller. This contains host controller with subcomponents, deluxe comms module, printer, battery. When you click on battery, you can see all of the important information related to the battery and battery usage, the temperature, the voltage, the amperage, the remaining capacity the full charge capacity, and the average time to empty. New devices will always say 65,530 minutes until you conduct an average of three discharge cycles. As it takes an average, this number will change. The average time to full charge. The battery is at 100%, so it is zero minutes. How many times has a battery deep discharge cycle been performed? This device has not performed any deep discharges. It only performs a deep discharge once it hits 30% or lower on the charge to remaining capacity. The design capacity is 6.75 amp hours. It was manufactured in April of 2010. The battery serial number, the manufacturer name, the device name, and the device chemistry are also shown. Next on the host controller is the radio, a Lamar radio. When you click on that, you can see the MAC address, the IP address, the access point, the SSID, and the RSSI. When you click on the SPO2 sensor, you will see either Massimo or Nelcor listed here. The Sure Temp Thermometer. When you click on it, you can see the cycle count, how many temperatures this module has taken. When you click on the probe, you can see the type of probe and the cycle count of the probe. This is different than the module cycle count because this is the number of temperatures the probe has actually taken the part number of the probe, the lot code, and lot sequence number of the probe, the calibration date, the machine or the person who calibrated it, and the last device this probe was used on, and the number of times this probe has changed devices. So if you have people in your facility that say this probe is bad and the probes have been moved around, you are able to see that this probe was originally connected to a different device. Next, looking at the NIVP sensor, you can see our cycle count, and you can perform accuracy checks or calibration checks. You can perform a leak test, an overpressure test, and an accuracy check. 
I will review the calibration check process with you again a little bit later. On the Braun thermometer, again you see the dock cycle count and the thermometer cycle count. The dock cycle count is the number of times the thermometer has been placed into the charging dock, and the temperature cycle count is the number of times the probe has actually taken temperatures. Down on the bottom, you can read the warranty information for the device. This device has a two-year warranty, and it was manufactured in 2010, so it will expire in 2012. You can see the repair information, the last calibration date, who performed it, and the next calibration due date, which is selectable for your facility. If you go to Admin, Settings, you can change your calibration interval to monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually. Welch Allen currently recommends that you check this device on an annual basis, so leave it at the annual for right now. Next, go to Reports tab by clicking on Reports. This provides the daily averages since the manufacture date. You can also change this by going to Settings. Under Reports Baseline, you can change it to the last calibration date or the manufacture date, whichever you prefer. You will look at the calibration date. So you will see when you refresh that it actually changes over to calibration date. This is the device daily average of the device power on time, so the average on time per day is less than one minute. The NIBP cycles per day. When you go to the Upgrade tab, you can see the Connects device and what it consists of for modules and associated software versions. If a software version is available, it will show it here. This is delivered through the Partner Connect system down to your PC running the Welch Allen Service Tool. Whether that device is connected or whether you have added it to the maintained device list, it will deliver automatically and notify you in the work list. As you saw in the work list, this device has an upgrade available. The software upgrade is for the host controller. The SPO2 and SureTemp do not have upgrades, so it states no upgrade available. When you highlight the row where an upgrade is available, you have two options, the release notes and the upgrade. The software release notes tell you what that software actually does, what that software consists of, including the bug fixes and additional software features that have been added to it. So on clicking on the upgrade, the service tool tells you that you are about to begin a process and asks you if you would like to continue. Yes. The on-screen display of the device disappears while the device shuts down and reboots. You'll see the MCE bootloader. It will run for a few minutes and then it will disappear from the on-screen display as well. The upgrade occurs. There are two versions. One is the bootloader. The second, from 50 to 100 percent, is the actual software upgrade. Now you will see that it disappears from the on-screen display again while the device reboots. This is the 50 to 100 percent region, which is the main software, and you'll notice that it stays in MCE bootloader mode. The MCE bootloader is similar to an MS-DOS application. As it reaches 99%, the device will shut down again and reboot, and then the software upgrade will be completed. Now our device is rebooting. It will stay at 99% until the device is totally rebooted, and it will perform a comparison check on the software upgrade product. As you notice, the Device tab will reopen on the Upgrade tab as it completes the software upgrade. If you were to look at the device, the device would be powered up as normal with the new software version. The host controller, as you see, the device firmware 1.70.00, and there is no longer an upgrade available. So now back on the work list, you highlight this device and say, Work done. This way, the next person who comes into the service tool can see a real-time list. So if one person installs an upgrade and puts the device back on the floor, the next person doesn't have to go check if there's an upgrade due and go searching for the device, only to find the upgrade has already been installed. So you should answer work done with yes. So let's go back to the device tab, configure. This is where we can assign our location. Since this is at my desk, I will write desk. The asset tag of this device is 123405. I will save it and it will go through and write that information to the device and will show it up on the device information tab. Under Current Settings, if you repair your device and need to replace the main board, host controller board, you will have to click Change on the Current Settings tab and type in the serial number from your device. You will also need to type in the host controller serial number. There is a sticker on the main board, Host Controller. Once you do that, you can click Save. Now on the Radio tab. This is where, if you have a radio on your device, you can go in and configure your radio. You must configure the radio on the device, CVSM and CIWS, to have an IP address before you can use this function, so we will cancel out of this tab. 
Now on the Verify and Calibrate tab, you can see your device and all of its modules and the last calibration date listing when a calibration was performed. The calibration date for the device can only change when you highlight and perform all. You must do a full calibration on the device in order to change this date. The reason behind this is your device is only fully calibrated when you check all of its features. The host controller can be calibrated separately. The SPO2 sensor does not involve a calibration, just a verification. The SureTemp Plus also only requires a verification. The NIBP sensor requires a calibration and the Braun thermometer a verification. The difference between the calibration and verification is that with a calibration, if the device or module is found to be out of specification, it will write offsets to that device to make the corrections. Verification will not perform a calibration. It is a calibration check. If it is out of specification, you must replace that module. Now let's go back and perform a basic calibration check. A calibration check is device-specific or facility-specific. If your facility only requires you to check the accuracy of the device, you can go back to Device Information tab, click on the NIBP sensor, and on the right you can perform a leak test, an overpressure test, and an accuracy test. So what we will do is show you what tools are needed for those tests and how to connect them to the device. If you click on Help and select Welch Allen Connects Device, the detailed help file opens. You are going to go to Basic Functional Tests for the Service Tool, Unlicensed Edition, which is the Basic Silver Edition. Click on NIBP Basic Functional Test Setup for the device. Here it lists the Welch Allen parts numbers of the materials that are required for this functional test. As you can see, you need a Y-tube, a USB cable, a pressure meter, a BP test volume. You need 500cc, 100cc, and 200cc test volumes. Welch Allen has these for sale, but most facilities have the required tools on hand already. The service tool ships with your device. Connect the device to your PC with the USB cable. The Y-tube to a 100cc test volume with a T that goes to your pressure meter and a hand bulb. The detailed instructions on how you perform the calibration are in the help files. If you click on the leak test, the help file tells you how to perform the test. Select the device, click the NIBP sensor, click the leak test and follow the prompts. So let's go back and perform the test. Go to the Device Information tab and highlight the NIBP sensor. Click the Leak Test. A pop-up tells you to connect to a 100cc volume. Click Next. The test runs. What this test does is actually go out and test the entire pneumatic system. This particular test failed. You'll notice that it put a red X next to the leak test, saying it failed because I forgot to connect the tubing to the test volume to show a failed test. It asks you, do you want to rerun this test? Click Yes. I have connected to the 100cc test volume. As you see, the leak test now has a green check mark indicating that it passed. You will see in just a few seconds that abort changed to close. Click Close. Next, we will click back on the NIBP sensor and perform the overpressure test. It states to connect to the 500cc test volume. Click Next. Now this test will pump up to 329 millimeters of mercury. This is a safety check to ensure the cuff does not inflate to more than 329 millimeters of mercury, so it does not cause patient harm or discomfort like bruising. It does this for adult mode and neonate mode. The neonate mode is much less than 329 millimeters of mercury. The test triggered at 297 millimeters of mercury, so it passed. Now I will show you neonate mode. This one should trigger about 140 to 165 millimeters of mercury. It went to a green check mark, so it passed. So now click Close. Next, if you go back to NIBP sensor, you can perform an accuracy test. With the use of a calibrated pressure meter, a 500cc test volume, and a hand bulb, you can open and close the valve on the device and pump the pressure meter to a specific value and compare that value to the device to see if the NIBP transducers are within calibration specifications. Click Open Valve. The pressure result on the pressure meter and the PC screen should go to zero. If the values do not zero, the device or the pressure meter needs to be serviced. Click Close Valve and using the hand bulb pump the pressure meter to 100 millimeters of mercury. Compare the pressure on the device to the pressure meter. Click Open Valve. Device and meter should go to zero. Repeat this process for 250 millimeters of mercury and then click Done. Now I will walk you through a full calibration of the device. You can see that this device is due for a calibration. In our work list effective tomorrow, you would see a calibration due for this device, but I will perform it with you now. You need a required tool list before performing a calibration. 
So click on the Help Files and then on the Welch Allen Connects device. It opens up the Help File. Now go to Verifying and Calibrating a Connects device for a gold license and click on Test Equipment Part Numbers. You see a list of the recommended tool set with the part numbers and quantities required to perform a calibration on your device. For example, Welch Allen recommends three 9600 plus testers. If you have the Massimo, you will need the Massimo Rainbow Tester. If you have Nelcore, you need the SRC Max and the various cables and test equipment. The only required tools that you must purchase from Welch Allen are the service test box, nurse call cable, and the Cal Key. The rest of the materials, such as the SRC Max, you can purchase from Nelcore. The Massimo Rainbow Set Tester you can purchase from Massimo. The rest of the equipment you can use almost equivalent equipment. So let's take a look at how to connect the tools to the device in order to perform a calibration. Click on Setup. This picture shows the CVSM device and the PC connected by a USB-A to Mini-B cable, the service test box, the pressure meter, the SPO2 tester, the hand bulb, which goes into a T fitting, which goes into a Y tube going to your device, and your test volume set. Basically, this is the setup, and you can read how to perform the test. Going on to verifying and calibrating the device, here you have to follow the on-screen prompts. Now let's calibrate the device. Highlight the Welch Allen Connects device. Click Perform All. If you have replaced any parts on your device, please complete these fields to keep a detailed record of the replacements and the reasons for the replacements. Click Begin. It starts off testing the host controller and conducts a series of tests. As it proceeds through the test, you will see the spinning icon, which means the test is in progress. The green check means the test has been performed and passed. The gray box with the dot means the test is to be performed. A red X means the test failed. So just answer the questions. Did the printer print a sample report? Yes or no? It did, so click Yes and continue. Did it print another one? Yes. In this particular LCD test, it tests the complete LCD. You look at the device and follow the corresponding prompts. For the touch screen test, you must touch the screen as requested. For the LED test, you will check the LED light bar on the device. You must check the device as requested and answer the prompts. You will test the beeper and then the nurse call if your device has nurse call using the proper tools. Follow the prompts. Next, test the battery. You need to unplug your device from the AC outlet. Check the light, the battery, the hours, fully charged, not charging, the voltage. Next, plug the cord back in, and again you see the battery information. You hear the beep. Next, to test the comms modules. You connect the USB to the host port and follow the prompts. You check each port sequentially. Clicking Next after the USB is moved to the next port. You see the test passed. Note, as you can see, a full calibration tests the full device. A calibration check or an accuracy check does not check the full system. The next test is the Ethernet communication test. If you do not have a radio or use the Ethernet, you can skip this test. Click Skip. Next, the SPO2 sensor, the Nelcore functional test. On the full calibration, you must use the Nelcore SRC Max. The reason is the service tool talks to this device and reads the results from it. So I set the BPM to 60 and the O2 percentage to 90. If you are just performing a functional check of the SPO2 sensor, you can use a standard SPO2 simulator, but for a full calibration of the device, you must use the SRC Max to pass the test. Now to the SureTemp Plus thermometer. Now I'll show you the low temperature test, medium, and high temperature test by placing the probe in the 9600 plus heater and reading the value on the device and providing that input to the service tool. These heater tests actually test the functionality of the probe and its communication to the module. The calibration key temperature test is used to test the temperature module. So if a module is good and the temperature tests fail and the calibration key test passes, it is most likely a probe issue. The test is done so disconnect the key and connect the probe. And on to the NIBP sensor. 
During the calibration, you will conduct all of these tests, including power calibration on both primary and safety transducers, pressure calibration, and pressure accuracy tests. If the accuracy test fails, the service tool will actually write the values obtained to the module. As you can see with a full calibration, the test sequence is much larger than a calibration check or accuracy check. You can see by the green check marks that these tests passed. Disconnect the Y-tube and connect the dual lumen tubing to the 500cc test volume. The reason for the dual lumen tubing is with fast BP technology, the blood pressure is taken on the way up, and one tube measures the noise level while the other listens for the pulse. Next, you test the single lumen connector. This device can take both single and dual lumen tubing. I do not have one, so I will skip this test. Next is the overpressure test. It uses the 500cc test volume and will go through both adult and neonate mode, as described in the calibration check or accuracy check procedure earlier. The residual pressure test takes two and a half minutes to complete. As the test completes, you'll close NIBP and go on to the brawn. Follow the on-screen instructions. Put the brawn thermometer into calibration mode. Read the value. Enter the medium value. Enter the high value. Now turn off the brawn. As the test completes, the close button will appear. Now please pay attention to the last calibration date for the device. As you can see, it changed for the device, the host controller, and the NIBP sensor. It did not change for the SpO2 sensor or the shore temp or brawn thermometers. So it's the only verification or functional check. If one of these were out of specification, you would need to replace that module. So now on closing the Connects Device tab or clicking the Refresh button, you can open up the log file for the device. You can go to File, View Log File, and see the saved log file, and you can find the device. I have several log files, so I can search by date. The service tool actually has three files it gets from the device. Service Log, Event Log, Error Log. I am looking for the calibration log for this device, so I select this one. This is the service record. The date the service was performed for this device. What was done? Device Software Upgrade. What version it was at? what version it went to, whether it was successful. You performed a verify calibration of the NIBP sensor, a calibration check. So you'll see that the device passed all these tests, but all these other tests were skipped. Moving on, a leak test was 1.53. Next, the overpressure test, and again it should trigger between 280 and 329. The device triggered at 296.69. Neonate mode was 130 to 164. The device triggered at 144.16. So then I walked you through a full calibration, and these are the tests that were run for the full calibration of the host controller. They all passed, if you remember. There's the battery information. 
then the SP02, the Nelcore functional test passed. Here's the specifications. Here's the actual device readings. Then the Shure temp thermometer, the test run, the specifications, the actual readings, the switches for the probe, the specifications, the actual readings, the low temperature test, the actual readings, the medium and the high. Next, the NIBP sensor calibration, the tests run, the specs versus the actual readings. Moving down here, you'll see the accuracy test, both primary and safety. Then the pressure accuracy test for different settings, what it was for, primary and safety, and what it was on the meter. The inflation test. the linearity test, the overpressure test. To test results for the Braun thermometer along with the specifications and the results for the high, low, medium test. The end of the record, the date and the time. Who performed the test? You can print it out, keep it in your file, or keep it as an electronic record. Now close out the log file. The last thing I want to show you today is how to install a licensable feature onto your device. So close out the Welch Allen Connects Device tab and go back out to the main menu. Go to Administration, Install License, select the medical device license. Come down and select the device. You see it printed in your device name. Go to the Authorization Code box and type in your authorization code and click Activate. You will get a pop-up box that tells you it is installing. It is going through and communicating back to Welch Allen through port 5093 and 5094. It is going to activate that license on that device and the end result is it is complete. Click Close. Click the red X and your licensable feature is installed. This has helped you install a license to the device. That concludes our service tool training.